It's day 79, a crash course in HTML forms. So forms are the only real way that web pages have to communicate with the web server. So, so far we haven't really written any web pages that talk back. We did a little bit of it last time where I showed you the cheat for reading in what was after parts of the URL, but that's not really a way to build a fully functioning website. So the question is, what do we do to make that work? Well, we need to build a form and you've seen these before. Forms are everywhere. Whenever you type text into a box on a website and click go or click submit, it sends that text magically through the internet. And actually what it does is everything within that form, it packages up into a little dictionary and sends it across the internet to your server that can read it, decide what to do with the data it's got and generate a page to send back. We're just going to look at building those HTML forms today. In this HTML template, I'm going to get rid of Hello World and add in a form. Now you can see straight away the tag on its own will work. And if I refresh, nothing seems to change. And that's as expected because the form has a bunch of things in it. First of all, we need to set it to a method. Now, there are a couple of methods here, but the main way that we'll be sending information from a form to the web server is by post. And I want you to think about post as literally packaging it up into a little envelope and sending it through the postal service back to your web server. That ain't what happening at all, but it's the best analogy you're going to get. We also need to specify an action. That's where it's going to send it. Now, if you're using Flask, it's going to be forward slash something. So for instance, forward slash process could be where we write the code to deal with this form. And inside the form, we can have our normal P tags and all that sort of stuff. But the important and interesting stuff is probably going to be things like the inputs. So I'm going to put a P tag in for name and I'm going to bring in an input tag. Now input has a type. You'll see there, there's a bunch of things it's suggesting to us, but we're going to start with text. You do need to give every input tag a name because otherwise it won't have a name in the dictionary. I'm going to call this name username. And if I refresh now, we should see some stuff appearing on the screen. There we go. If I put this input within the P tag, it'll appear in line with it, which is probably more what you want. I've now got a place to type. And if I press enter, it'll send the form. Now, of course, the reason it's saying it can't be found is because I haven't built a processing page and I won't until tomorrow. So don't worry about it. Now, that text box, that same text box can be used for anything that involves just normal text entry. But there are a few different kinds of text box that I want to show you. First of all, there is one that does check to make sure things are emails. So if I try to press enter on email, it's not going to let me until I've got something that looks like an email in there so it can actually submit. There's also a bunch of other things on the screen and number which give very specific formatting options to the text box. A useful input tag is also hidden. This has a specific argument called value where you can set a value. For instance, if a user has a user ID, we could set it like this. It doesn't appear in the form, but it is there. When it posts that off, that value will still be in the receiving end. And that's quite handy for sending important bits of information about the user that they don't necessarily need to see. To send it, I need a button. That's got a type option as well. And the submit button is the default. You then type what you want to put on the button and close your button tag. Notice the input tags didn't need a closure. Now I can fill my data in and click save and it'll go off to that web page. Which is exactly what I want. Now we can change these a little bit. There's some more arguments we can add to each of the tags. Required just tells me that I need to fill that in. So if I try and click the send button, it'll tell me I need to fill that in. Same with email. Now, if I do it, it'll shout at me for both. And if I try and do this, it's not an email. You see there, I'm getting an error message that tells me that I need it in an email format. And I haven't done anything special for that. I've just told the box that it's an email box and that helps me out no end. Now, I'm not going to go through every type of form element you might need as this covers most of your use cases, but you might also want a drop down menu. A drop down menu is a special kind of tag called a select tag. Now, a select tag works a little bit like an unordered list. We need to give it a select tag, give it a name, 
And then within that tag, we need to give our options. So they're going to be options. Now, of course, if we add in a bunch of different options, and I refresh, we get our drop down menu now and the ability to save our data. Of course, maybe that should have been in the P tag so that it appeared in line with some text. The problem is that none of these have value, uh, which means that if I click send on that, it's just going to send over the fact that something has been selected in Baldi's. Let's give it a value. Now, whichever one I pick will send its value through in the post, and I'll receive that in the dictionary on the other side, which is quite nice. Of course, other things exist like radio buttons where you can only select one of an option, or check boxes where you can select multiple, but I'll let you go and look that up because they are more esoteric uses of that feature. The most common problem that you will have is that people forget the name. You will not notice that's a problem until we get on to tomorrow's lesson. So make sure that every input field has its name. It's also really easy to mix up method and action in the form title. You'll probably see me do that a few times if you watch some of the solutions in the next couple of days. And all it means is that it gets confused over what it does with it and where it goes. The final problem is another one you won't see, and it's not putting the form in the form tag. If I don't put that form tag in at all, the page will look exactly the same. However, when I click save, nothing's going to happen because I haven't put a group that's going to create a dictionary from. The form tag says everything between these two things is going to post all this data to the action page when I click the submit button. It gathers up all the entries from all the input elements and puts it in the dictionary for you so you can see it later. Once again, I've broken some code. Go fix it for me. It's going to be really hard to debug, though, because it looks the same whether it's broken or not. Your challenge today. I would like you to make a login form for a website. It's going to take in a username, an email address, and a password, and the submit button is going to have a login in it. When you click submit, it's going to post that data to slash login as its action. Should be a pretty easy build, but I'll leave it up to you to fiddle with. Here's a hint though. There is a specific input type for a password that'll help you out from having your passwords on display in boxes on the screen, like a mug. When you're done, publish it to the community and use the hashtag replit 100 days of code on social media to share it with us. Tomorrow, We'll be back in Flask and we'll connect this form up to an actual page to make it work.